Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. You guys, I am having major technical issues right now, so I'm gonna be having to hold my phone for today's intro myself. So I'm sorry if the wiggling bugs you or whatever, but I'm trying really, really hard to have it be good and still. Anyway, um, hi, welcome back to my channel. Uh, welcome back to another murder mystery and nails tutorial. I know you guys really like these kinds of videos, so do I. I really want to step up my game and kind of really just focus on these types of tutorials for you guys. I'm going to be getting another one out today and today's case I feel like is one that needs to be shared with as many young adults, young girls, young college students, women in general, people in general, because this is one of those cases that could literally happen to anybody and um, I just feel like it's important to spread the word about it. It's a more recent case with just happened within the last year or two. The verdict just came out with the person and I just want to spread awareness about it. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. And for today's nails, I'm going to be trying a Model 1's new, well, I don't know if they're like brand new, but they're new to me. They're new lipstick poly gels. They recently sent this over to me and it just looks so cute. It has like... I don't know it just has like a lot of good stuff in it and i think you guys are gonna like it so if you want to listen to today's case watch me do some nails with model one's lipstick poly gel then please keep watching Mwah. bye hey guys welcome back to my channel i hope everyone's having an amazing day an amazing weekend so today i'm going to be trying out the model one's lipstick gel polishes I know I accidentally said poly gels in my intro, but it's actually gel polishes. So um, I just wanted to clear that up, but you guys, I actually really, really enjoyed these. I'll get more into that later. I'm gonna go ahead and start the case now, but just wanna let you guys know that I have had a lot of fun using these. It's a really great product and I have a code, which is SLAY10 and you can use that and save between 10 and 15 percent off on all your orders on modelones.com but yeah let's get into today's case so we're going to be talking about a girl named samantha josephson and she was born in princeton new jersey to seymour and marcy josephson and she grew up in robbinsville new jersey she was 21 years old and a senior at the University of South Carolina, where she majored in political science. And she was actually only weeks away from graduating with her bachelor's degree in May of 2019. Um, and 2019's actually when this occurred in March of that year. Um, so yeah, she was only like two months away from graduating college and after college she had planned on attending Drexel University School of Law, which she had just earned a full scholarship to as well as a partial scholarship to Rutgers and she aspired to practice international law. So she was just headed to law school. Uh, she was an extremely bright girl with a promising future ahead. Um, interviews I watched said she was just like, she couldn't even believe she got into this drug cell. It was like a really big deal. She was so excited. Um, she, uh, she also had a ton of friends and she loved to go out and have fun and spend time with their friends and her boyfriend. She was also super close to her family. Her dad called um, her and her little sister, Sweet Pea, and he said Samantha and her sister were best friends with their parents. And based off interviews I've seen and research, I can tell that Samantha was raised in a really, really good and loving home. She had amazing parents. And as I mentioned earlier, she had a boyfriend and his name was Greg uh Corvishla <laughs> oh my gosh I think I totally pronounced that wrong but he said he loved her so much and he saw a future with her they were actually headed to law school together and everyone said they had a really happy healthy relationship and uh yeah she was just like in a really really good exciting spot in her life so on March 27th 2019 the night before Samantha's death her and some of her friends decided it would be fun to spend the weekend at the Five Points District, which is located in downtown Columbia. It has a ton of fun bars and restaurants and is a popular place for people to go and bar hop, especially for students of USC. Um, you'll see later in some footage, like you can totally tell it's like kind of like a college hangout place like picture a downtown area full of bars and restaurants and just tons of college kids out drinking having fun just having a good time 
So the girls get ready to go out to have a good time. This wasn't their first time there at the Five Points District. They had been there before, so they knew what to expect, but nonetheless, they were super excited for a quick girls trip getaway, and they made their way to the district. Samantha and her friends get to Five Points, and they start bar hopping, drinking, and having fun. And later in the night, her and her friends end up at a bar called Bird Dog. I'm not exactly sure why they ended up staying and hanging out at this particular bar, but they do. So at around 2 a.m., Samantha decided to call it quits for the night. She was done partying, she was tired, and she wanted to see if any of her other friends were ready to leave for the night as well. And it turned out and none of them wanted to go back to the room yet. So Samantha's like, it's fine, I'll just order an Uber and I'll see you guys back there when y'all are done. Samantha gets on her phone and she requests an Uber and heads outside to wait for her ride. As she's standing outside the bar, the nightlife is still very busy and active. There's a bunch of people walking and Samantha stands there on the side of the street, innocently chatting on the phone with her boyfriend and waiting for her Uber to arrive when, unbeknownst to her, her life would soon come to a tragic end. And this is where the story turns because as Samantha is waiting outside for her Uber, according to surveillance footage at 2.09 a.m., a black Chevrolet Impala pulled up beside her in an empty parking space. You can see Samantha willingly entering the vehicle in the back seat, assuming it was her Uber driver, and she would never be seen alive again. Samantha's boyfriend was tracking Samantha's phone that night to make sure she was getting home safe and he noticed the route she was on was very strange. He could tell something was off, but he was two hours away unfortunately and there was nothing he could do. So of course, when Samantha's roommates and her friends get home and notice she's not there, they become very concerned because she left before them. They start calling other friends, asking if someone had seen her. They were posting online, calling and texting her phone over and over and with no answers or no leads, they became extremely, extremely worried. After she didn't show up for her breakfast shift at the restaurant she worked at, they knew something was, wrong, was, was really wrong. And after no response from Samantha, later that afternoon at around 1 p.m., Samantha's roommates reported her missing. Authorities then go to the girl's apartment and started, started collecting information on Samantha and the girl's whereabouts the night before, like what they were doing, where they were last seen, conversations that they had, um, if she had any known enemies, etc. So uh, fast forward about two hours now, two turkey hunters were hunting in a field located in a small town called New Zion in Clarendon County when they suddenly discovered Samantha's body. And this town was about like an hour-ish away from where she was last seen in Five Points. So authorities put out an alert on all the drivers registered to that Chevy Impala and they were and they instructed the police officers um, to pull over every black Chevy that they saw and or came in contact with. So police are looking for this car. They're, um, they're giving interviews to Samantha's boyfriend who's being totally cooperative by the way. He was cleared. He wasn't a suspect at all doing interviews with her parents, her friends, just everyone that knew her. And when suddenly, you know, there's a cop that's running his own business and he sees a Chevy Impala that matches the description drive past him. So he gets behind the car and he pulls the car over and inside the car was a man named Nathaniel Rowland. And he was seen by police driving the car that matched the description of the one Samantha was last seen entering in their surveillance video. When Nathaniel, when he was pulled over, he got out of the car, you guys, and ran away like a little bee. But he was quickly caught and was arrested at 3 a.m. on March 30th. Inside of his car, police found a container of liquid bleach, germicidal wipes, and a window cleaner. The car also contained Samantha's phone, like her phone was in his car, as well as a large amount of her blood, which was in the passenger seat and in the trunk, and it covered the black the back seat. Um, when investigators searched the trash behind Roland Nathaniel's girlfriend's residence, they uncovered cleaning supplies and a two-bladed knife, both of which had Samantha's blood on them. 
Sam's blood was also found on a sock and a bandana, uh, both owned by Nathaniel. And additionally, Samantha's DNA was collected from under Nathaniel's fingernails. So basically a closed case. So now we're going to find out a little bit about what happened when Samantha got into this man, this sick man, Nathaniel's car. And uh, just a little disclaimer, it is pretty graphic. So if you want to go ahead and fast forward a little bit to skip the details of what happened to her, please do and feel free to. So when Samantha ended up entering into the back of Nathaniel's car, thinking that it was her, her Uber, she obviously at some point noticed that it wasn't her Uber and wasn't able to get out of the car because Nathaniel had activated the child lock so that, that the doors could only be opened from the outside, thereby trapping, uh, trapping Samantha inside the vehicle. Um, reports showed that she had fought get she put a hell of a fight up she um tried to kick out the back of the window in the back car she tried to kick out the window she tried everything that she possibly could um an autopsy showed that she died of multiple sharp force injuries which i told you guys was this um it looked like i'll put a picture but it was like a knife type thing like a tool but this a sharp tool almost. Um, she, the pathologist could not, could, not, could not determine an exact number of wounds because there were so many, but it was estimated around 120 separate stab wounds that he inflicted on her. Um, it also her autopsy also revealed that she had a huge extent of her blood loss. The human body normally has at least four liters of blood, but when her body was found, it only contained 1.3 tablespoons of blood. And his car um, went to show the evidence of that. Um, during the attack, like I said, she attempted to shield herself. Um, one of his strikes went completely through her right hand. Her right hand actually used it to protect herself. It's actually like too graphic to share her exact injuries, um, but she suffered a severe uh, hyoid bone, bone as well as stab wounds to her face, her face, neck, shoulder, torso, back, long leg, and her feet. She bled profusely, ultimately dying within 10 to 20 minutes, according to the pathologist who conducted her autopsy. Um, investigators believe Nathaniel then dragged her body to the New Zion field where she would later be discovered. According to police, the area where uh, her body was located is where Nathaniel recently resided. Um, he was seen out there like a day before on a four-wheeler or something like that. Um, but once they had him in custody, he was then charged with kidnapping, murder, and possession of a weapon during the commission of a crime. And of course, everyone is asking why, like what led him to do this? Like what happened? Because literally like they didn't, they didn't know each other. They had never met before. He, he she just happened to walk out of this bar and wait for an Uber and he just happened to see her and drove around again after seeing her. He, after he saw her, he drove around the block again twice. And so that's why she thought it was her Uber because she's like, oh, okay, he saw me. Um, he's flipping around because he's trying to find like a good place to park. You know what I mean? And that's when, I, that's why I tell you guys, like this could literally happen to anyone. This, this needs to be spread to so many people as possible because you guys like, how many of you have been in Ubers or Lyfts? Like, I have been in an Uber so, so many times, and we need to be cautious. Her parents are trying to um, pass a bunch of laws, which I'll kind of go into that more in a little bit, but they're trying to get laws with Uber and Lyft and state laws and trying to get things more like, you know, things on cars and all these different access codes you have to do and blah, blah, blah. Like, the first thing you do when you get in, in an Uber is they want you to ask the Uber's name and they want the Uber to ask your name. And you both need to verify that to make sure that this is the right person. You know what I mean? Like, I know so many of us like have so much going on and we're all like thinking about other things, talking on the phone, you know, intoxicated. And yeah, like it just, it just makes me so, so, so sad because it was just like the most worst wrong place at the wrong time 
mistake you could ever make, you know, and it's just not fair. But anyway, so in addition to Samantha's murder, Nathaniel, like, we're not sure this is his first time engaging in an activity like this because he's alleged to have sold items that were stolen from a woman during a kidnapping in Columbia, so the same area. Uh, this alleged victim, so this other girl who was carjacked by two men while at a traffic light in October 2018. So she's in her car at a traffic light and two guys run out to her car and physically assault her and force her to drive them to an ATM where they robbed her of her money. And then before forcing her to drive her home where they again robbed her of items including of a PlayStation 4. So... According to Rich, uh, Richland County deputies, hours after the alleged kidnapping, Nathaniel sold some of the items stolen from this woman's home, including the PlayStation 4 at a pawn shop. He was charged with obtaining goods under false premises. So this guy is not a good guy. Like, this wasn't just like, oh, I was out of my right mind one time kind of thing, accident. No, like, he preys upon women. You know what I mean? So on... um. June 9th, so he was arrested, okay, right, um, a, the next year, he was denied bond on J June 9th, 2020, and a virtual hearing where both his family members and, um, uh, Samantha's family members both gave statements in front of the judge, which was Judge Benjamin, and then on July 20th, 2021, which was just, like, a not even a month ago, a couple of weeks ago, you guys can look up a bunch of videos of his trial on YouTube, but um, his trial began, and during his trial, the prosecutors called 31 witnesses, including the turkey hunter who fans Samantha's body, and Nathaniel, Nathaniel's former girlfriend, which, oh my gosh, her testimony was crazy, like, she was in the car the day after he did this to Samantha, well, the morning of, actually, and she just knew that she yeah she like he was trying to sell samantha's phone to her and she that she saw blood everywhere and like he took her to work that i was like crazy but um yeah all of like like all of the stuff was totally against him you know what i mean so on june 27th and i mean on july 27th he was nathaniel was found guilty of kidnapping and murdering samantha joseph josephson and uh, of, of possessing a weapon during a violent crime and the jury deliberated for a little over an hour and yeah the judge set him to um life in prison said that this was the most heartless thing he trial he's ever been a part of and uh it was just like all the evidence against him was just so much you know so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this 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 case i hope that you enjoyed these fun barbie nails I had so much fun making them. They're inspired by Max Estrada, the owner of Eno Couture. And yeah, I'll have my giveaway and um, other, uh, yeah, I have a giveaway and a big nail haul video coming up. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Bye.